Hello, hello weirdos. Welcome back to my channel. This is part two of a video that I put out last week, that being talking about all of the books that I read in June. As a reminder, I read 29 books in June. So that was a lot. And part of the reason why I switched up this, uh, I split up this video into two because it was too much. And I'm also going to be traveling, so I'm currently not... Mm here when you're seeing this. I am um, away with my cousins getting all of the baby cuddles that I want and I can't show you. 14 books. This is going to be the books that I read in the latter half of June. So let's just get started and we're gonna start with a smutty book and that being Pool of Dreams. This is by Sam Burns and W.M. Fox and this you're following two characters and one of them is a fae, which I was kind of skeptical about. I was like, mm, I'm not really sure if I enjoy this like fae genre. I had really bad time with um, Cool Prince series, did not like that. Um, so I was a little bit skeptical, but I was like, mm, I don't know, I'm horny. Um, and so I gave this a go and I, I quite liked this. So you're following a fae who's been trapped in like this pool of water to kind of keep the fae and the human realms separate um, until these humans come bustling, bustling in to steal this sword that he has kept also with him in this pool of water. And one of these humans is a king who was never meant to be king. And you follow the two of them while they navigate this world where you have this boundary between the human and the fey world breaking down as they grow closer to each other. Um, and I quite enjoyed this. I like this a lot. I just think the, the cover is also like really cool. Um, yeah, this, this is standalone, so there's no more in the series. So, uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed this. I don't think there's much else to say about The Pool of Jeans other than it was a fun time. I liked it. The next book that I read is The Magus by Jonathan Falls. I read this because of my student tattoo. I don't quite know what to say. I did not enjoy this book. I thought I would enjoy it a lot more if it was gayer. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunately not. It's very painfully heterosexual. I was like, that is sad. It would have been really cool if like this was gayer, but it's not. You're following this man as he is moving to, he's moving to Greece because he got a job at a boarding school teaching English, which I thought is a really interesting per, per, like, I don't know, I thought that was an interesting start. And he meets this older gentleman and who is very confusing to our main character and constant like it feels like every 100 or 150 pages or so in this book there's this huge reveal of like what is actually happening i honestly just got tired of it i was like i i, I don't get it <laughs> it's not that i don't get it it was just more of like what is the point of this because you this older older man who is who is the aforementioned magus and I was just like, I just don't understand why. <laughs> like, like why he is doing what he is doing just to basically fuck around with people on the island. Like, I don't know. I like, I just didn't, I don't know. It wasn't, it was not my favorite. Yeah, I think that is really all I have to say about the Magus. Would not, would not read this again. Next, we're going to, um, next book that I read is True Biz. This is by Sarah Novick, and this is a book that I read for my Goodreads project. This it was in the fiction category, and my dog chose it. <laughs> and I actually quite like this. What is this book even about? Uh, you're following a bunch of deaf characters in Cincinnati. It all surrounds them going to this deaf school and like building up their identities um, within the deaf community. And there's a bunch of different people who come from like different perspectives. So there's this one kid who is, whose parents were deaf, he is deaf, his grandparents were deaf, he's like from this long line of like deaf people in this deaf community. And you have this, another character who has a cochlear, hasn't had much success and is dealing with he hearing parents who haven't learned sign, have very little motivation to learn sign and who have forced her to have a cochlear um, for, essentially the optics. And you also have other characters 
who um, are deaf and African American. Another character that is important to this is the headmistress, who is a coda, who is a child of deaf adults. And it basically follows them as they're dealing with bullshit. <laughs> I, I I could reveal like the huge thing. I don't want to, because um, I think that the huge like conflict that is like overarching and looming throughout the whole story isn't revealed at the beginning, and I don't think it's in the advertising, so I don't want to say it. And I thought that this had a bunch of really good discussions about things within like the deaf community and how they have felt constantly that. Uh, the world is trying to erase them and eradicate them. I just, I just really felt that um, in this book, and it, it kind of solidified my feelings about a lot of things, in my opinions, about like cochlear implants and stuff like that. In a way where I'm just like, I just, where I had talked about like my opinions about cochlear implants, and I like to a lot of my friends, they're just kind of like immediate like shutting down of like my ideas and or of my opinions, or I'm just like, I just don't see and 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 that that kind of feels frustrating. And like, I, I am not deaf myself. And I'm just like, I, I just don't understand why we aren't listening to people like within the communities that these things directly affect, rather than trying to make people adhere to what the world views as like normal. Um, and there's lots of discussions in this book that talk about eugenics, how eugenics, the bad word of like eugenics and like what that means has really disappeared, but it is still persistent a lot in today's culture. I really feel that. And as somebody who like I am disabled and would fall into one of the categories of the we want to eradicate you it's gross I don't know it's it's a it it's it's it is very disheartening to live in a world where people and the wider community wants people like me dead and it goes beyond just like my identities that are more visible like my gender identity my sexual identity and stuff like that but it's like my it's like oh all these axes people want me to not exist in this world um, and, and I really felt that like in the book, um, I really connected it to uh, on that level. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it's, it's a really good book. Uh, so that was True Biz. The next book that I read, I finished is called The Escape Artist. This is by Jonathan Freeland. And I cannot talk about this because it is in the running for the booktube prize. So wait for that video to come out and you will see more of my opinions on that. The next book is The Gathering Dark. This is a series of horror, like gothic fairy tale, uh, what is it called? An anthology of folk horror. I thought this was going to be like queer, like retellings of like horror, uh, of stories in a horror way. Um, but it's not. It's like these, they're unique uh, own stories that are very much in the realms of folk stories, essentially. Stories that little kids tell each other like at night to scare each other. It's like, oh, don't you know someone died in like that house? Very much in, in that vein. And I quite enjoyed these. Uh, this is a collection is by many, many different authors. Um, here are all the authors on the back. Yeah, I quite, I quite enjoyed these. Some of the lines are very haunting. I don't know what else to say. Um, about this other than I thought that they were really good and I liked them. They were a little bit on the um, mystical side and I would personally like but again it's folk horror so not everything has to like make logical sense if that makes any sense. This doesn't all have to be about evil people doing evil things. So in that way I like enjoyed it the same way that like someone would enjoy like a ghost story or something like that. The next book I finished is All Boys Aren't Blue. This is George, this is by George M. Johnson. And I read this because this is the book in the, um, this is like the group book, the, the Queer Lit Readathon. I forget what round it is. This is, uh, it says like a memoir manifesto. Uh, it tells a story about George M. Johnson and his, his life 
and it is particularly targeted towards like youth who are coming to their queer like identity and learning about things and trying different things. I, I, I mentioned that to say because it often will talk like directly to the reader and it assumes that the reader is um, in, in a point where they are unsure and he's trying to specifically pull lessons out of his life to teach to other people. And I, I enjoyed this. This is a book that I will be putting in my classroom for my students if they wanted to to read. Screw all the people who shouldn't think that I should put this in my classroom. Um, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was very, very good. And I'm very glad that I read this. Uh, in, the, in that vein, another book that will be living in my classroom is the next book that I read this much and said that this book is gay. Uh, this is by Juno Dawson. And this is a how to all things gay. I have heard from other people, um, some of my friends who've read this, uh, or read different versions of this who thought it was very very helpful for them and they had lent out their copy to other people so this was already on my radar as a book that I wanted to include in my classrooms and inc include in my classroom for my students but a rule that I have is that I have to read everything before it goes into my classroom because I just want to verify everything that everything is up to snuff and this is the more updated uh, edition versus like the last edition um, and it is just more inclusive of trans and non-binary people so I really like that this updated edition does exist. Some of the chapter titles include uh, the name game, you know, uh, where to meet people like you, coming out, haters gonna hate, ins and outs of gay sex, nesting, has all of these different things that I think are very um, that are very important for young queer people to have um, and to know and if I had a book like this and I read this when I was younger um, and when I was coming into my queer identity I think it would have been very helpful and so in that way I want to make this book as accessible as I can for my students. It does exactly what it set out to do. Another one that Juno Dawson has also wrote, written, wrote, I don't know, is What's the Tea? And I have yet to read that one but as soon as I have feeling that that one is going to be very good to smell and also wind up in my classroom. Yeah, that is This Book is Gay. The next book that I read is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nikki Vo. And this is interesting. It's different than what I thought it was because you are following this, it's, it's a novella, so it's super short. You're following this traveler who com comes to like a tavern to like talk to like this old grandma and they're chit chatting. And through this conversation, uh, that is like the, the framing of like the whole story and you get the tale of this grandma's youth and her relationship with this empress. The traveler person is non-binary, I believe, because they use they, them pronouns. It's not really a romance, but you get that through the book with the backdrop of political like all of this political stuff happening and i would say the emphasis is more on the navigating of like the political things and there's more to the series i don't know what else to expect out of this series um i'll be interested to see what the next book is i have it on it's hiding on my shelf it's, it's back there yeah i i just don't i just don't know what to expect we'll see we'll see what happens in this series because I think this book standed very well on its own that I finished um and that would be a case of possession by KJ Charles and I wasn't originally gonna read this because um I wasn't super in love with all of the like mystery shenaniganery that was happening in the first book I really liked more of like the romance aspect of the two people in this I, I felt it kind of the same thing it fell prey to the same thing I read this because I was like oh there is a threat that the relationship will be exposed between the two leads and I was like oh that that to me seems like compelling how they are going to navigate this there's a whole mystery aspect to that to this that also did not work for me and so that for that reason I don't think I will be continuing on like with this series although I do like the two main characters like relationships and need to see that I just don't click with the the mystery aspects to and like the investigative aspects like to these books um so I won't be continuing on but it was 
a lot more fun in this to see like their relationship like together whereas a lot of the first book was them building to a relationship yeah let me know if you disagree with me if you think I should continue to the third book in this series I don't know that's just kind of how I felt about this next book that I talked about is The Omega Objection this is by G.L. Carriger and I originally said that I wasn't going to read this book after I read the first book in this series, which was The Sumage Solution. But then I picked this one up and I'm, you know what, really glad I did because I quite enjoyed this one as well. Um, this one, you are following uh, a different member in the pack uh, named, named Tank. He doesn't have like a specific role. He's not an alpha, he's not a beta. You follow him as he meets this new person in his life that he feels super drawn to named Isaac. Isaac has a past with werewolves, you know, he is a werewolf. You don't know exactly what is going on with Isaac. Um, and I wish that was explained a little bit better in this book. Like it does explain it, but I wanted a little bit more, more details. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> and I did purchase the third book in the series. It's up on my shelves somewhere. Yeah, I've been, I've been really liking this stuff. Um, not much else to say. Uh, I didn't know that I was that I that I liked the Omegaverse and still until I started reading it and um, I do <laughs> I do that is for sure all right the next book that I finished that would be a clash of steel this is by CB Lee this is another it's a, one of those like remix classics series this is the actual first one that was published and this is lesbian treasure island uh, with a focus on Asian people uh specifically like east asian people and um i love this i was like screaming i was like this is so gay they are so gay it just made me so happy <laughs> um i really like that and it i like that it actually pulled from like real historical figures and had the whole mystery of the treasure be surrounding that but i just really like this um i i have only read two books so far in this series but I have thoroughly been enjoying them and I have more of the series up here that I cannot get to wait wait to read. I pre-ordered some more of the series so I'm just I'm just a fan. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. <laughs> I love what this 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 remixed classics stuff and I will keep reading and big fan big fan. Uh, and I like that it's like introducing me to more authors works. Not super drawn to much much more of what CB Lee has written because I think a lot of it has been like for more of the um middle grade crowd not that that's a bad thing but it just is not the stuff is like spies and um minecraft stuff which I'm not particularly drawn to but I will be looking more at what they write so that if something that is that I am drawn to I, I will pick up because I know that the author is a good author if that makes any sense Continuing on, I swear we're almost done. There's three books left. The next book that I read is The Chandler Legacies. This is by Abdi Nazaman. I've read his like a love story and I loved that. That was really good. And this was still really good as you are following five different students as they are a part of this thing called The Circle, uh, which is a writing workshop. They are all in a boarding school in America. It's, this boarding school is like a combined day and boarding school, which just means you have people living there and you have people living in the community. And you're really focused on uh, the boarding students. All of these kids are dealing with their own separate things. It focuses a lot on like bullying and bringing bullying to light in the many ways that it can happen. Um, at a bo boarding school from um, what teachers do to what fellow students do in the veins of hazing to just interpersonal bullying. And there's some stuff bullying in here. So like I, I have been bullied and have been bullied pretty severely. Wasn't super on board with bully getting together with the bully, like the person who was bullied that happens in this book. And I won't elaborate further on this. That was the only part that I like wasn't super sold on and I think that had a lot to do with like my own personal feelings about my beliefs um and people who have hurt me and and it is easier because you do get to see the belief side of things all of these characters are complex and multifaceted which is very helpful still really really good book 
that I think should be read by more people. Um, it's just my own personal feelings about this one, not small, but aspect of the book when I liked the rest of it a lot. I couldn't help but draw parallels to be from what I, my place, my, my, my work and my job and like this book. Um, what I can do to protect the kids under my care from some of the things that happen in this book. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of vague, but bleh, word vomit. The next book that I read is Jade City by Fonda Lee, and I do have the rest of the books. They're here. I, I enjoyed this. Uh, I read this fairly quickly because I was trying to finish it because it was part of my, um, it was part of the Queer Lit Readathon, and I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta read this, I gotta read it kind of fast so that I could finish it in the month of June. I really like this. I wasn't expecting people who died to die. I'm very curious for what is going to happen in the next book because essentially you have these two ruling like gangster like clans and they are warring and beefing over territory in this city that produces Jade and Jade is not only beautiful um, and is precious in that way but it's also nice because it gives people who wield it powers. And those people who wield it are called Green Bones. These two factions are at peace at the beginning of the book and then events happen to where there's full-scale war between them. And it's like just the start of the war, obviously a Jade War. The second book we're gonna learn more about the actual physical war that is happening uh, between these two factions. I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued to see how this continues. Yeah, especially because you have awesome fight scenes I really want to know what's going on with this one char one very young character and how his actions that he did in this book is going to play out in the second book. I don't know. That's very vague. I don't want to spoil. So there you go. Okay. The very last book that I read in the month of June, here we go, the 29th book, um, is The Secret to Superhuman Strength by Alison Bechdel. And this is talking about Allison's journey, talking about like her relationship with her body and her relationship with exercise and a bunch of her different relationships with different people and how that has changed over time and has been affected by different things and how that feeds into some of her like obsessive like qualities and how that relationship has shifted over time and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say it wasn't my favorite. It was interesting. It kind of was a lot of just, I don't know, blah, 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 like trying these different things, saying the things, thing, same thing over and over to get to like a conclusion that I felt like was self-evident. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if that's just like my relationship with like all of the stuff that the author talks about um, or not, but I, I don't know. It's just, it was interesting. If you're an Alison Bechdel fan, maybe. But also it's not like the absolute end all be all. I don't know. That's that's not a very good explanation. But uh, there you go. There you go. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of June. Let me know. Have you read any of these? What do you think about them? Did you have a good June? Did you have a happy pride? I know I did. I am going to finish this video now. And probably go back to reading some of the books that I was reading. All right. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.